Kelly Vaughn, and this is Inside Indy. And on the screen there, you see uh, she was a longtime health reporter for WRTV Channel 6 and her segment, Staying Healthy, and she talked about all the health issues you can think of, uh, sarcoidosis, diabetes, you name it, she covered it. Uh, she shared many, many stories with us on Indianapolis television, but today she is in our studio to share her own story about her health and uh, something that's happened in her life. She's here to share it with the Station Matthews. Hi, Station. Hi, Kelly. Good to see <laughs> so you. So good to see you. And we also have joining us Dr. Jerry Smart, who is with, uh, has his own practice, Smart Neurology, here in Indianapolis. Welcome, Dr. Smart. Thank you, Kelly. And that's S-M-A-R-T-T. -T. I love that, Smart <laughs> Neurology. Smart. Man, Stacia. Mm, I know. If I do it, I do it big, right? <laughs> I, I, tell us what, I don't, I don't even want to speak it. I want you to share your story. I'm a stroke survivor. And uh, just a few days before my birthday in March, I was out with friends, enjoying a good time, having dinner, um, decided to... Uh, go to the grocery store after dinner because my sister and cousin were, or I'm sorry, my sister and my niece were in town. And we were just going to go get some food to make dinner. Um, I remember going into the grocery store, mm -hmm. um, but I don't remember anything after that. Mm -hmm. And when I sort of came to, uh, nearly a month had passed and uh, I was in rehab. But I, that evening, I guess as we were in the store, um, I, I don't know what you would call it, Doc, but I sort of, I had no recollection of what was happening. All I knew is that I had complained of a weird headache weird. and okay. um, drove home, unpacked food. At the time, I had a couple of cats, fed my cats. Mm -hmm. And I guess my sister said I woke her up and said, Sissy, um, I need you to do me a favor. Don't let me lay down. Don't let me fall asleep. Don't let me do this. Don't let me do that. Got to get to the hospital. I think I'm having a stroke. And when we got to the hospital, I was having a stroke. The symptoms, she said I had complained that I had a weird headache. And I don't remember the doctor's name. Uh, I just remember covering a story about stroke and, or about heart attacks, actually. And I said, well, if you have a stroke, how do you know you're having one? He said, it'll be the worst headache you've ever had. So mm. that must have been it. And clearly to, to move and take action, and I said, get me to the hospital. Um, to know that three months out of my life were gone, uh, or three weeks, um, I'm nervous. I can't believe this. I've been on the air all these years. I'm a little nervous. Um, yeah. You know what? Well, the camera is facing the direction. We don't direction. want to stress you out. We no, don't no, want to stress no, her out okay. doing Dr. Okay. Smart. No, no stress. No, 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 just relax. I'm okay. I'm just okay. Calm down. I'm okay. I know you're excited to be I here. I am excited to be here. I mean, because I want people to understand that if you have the symptoms, mine was clearly Doc, the headaches, take action. You, you and act quickly. Don't sit on it, don't think about it, well, oh, maybe not, or I'm gonna take a aspirin, I'm going to bed. No, it's better to be safe than sorry. And had I not had that knowledge, I may not even be sitting here talking to you. Yeah, because it sounds so c clinical, like you're walking in to tell your sister now, don't let me do this, don't, I mean, and then I guess at that point, were you, when did you decide to go to the hospital? I mean, why didn't you just go then? Or you were thinking, I'm it. not sure. No, we did. I went, okay. That's what I was telling her because she had fallen asleep. And she okay. flew in from Phoenix. I'm getting ready for bed, but the, the headache must have gotten worse. I woke her up and said, don't let me sleep. Don't let me put my head down. Keep As we're me heading alert. out, don't let me fall. Okay. Take me to the hospital because something's wrong. Wow. And when I walked in the hospital, I even told the doctor, I think I'm having a stroke. Although I was coherent, there was no slurred speech. Of course, they took I'm you straight talking. back. When right, you come straight back. I'm talking to, the, to them just like I'm talking to you. But when they ran the test, I was clearly having wow. a stroke. Wow. Yeah. Dr. Smart, is, is, this, is this common in terms, and I know people have strokes, but she seemed to know the symptoms 
And she even came to the doctor and said, doctor, I'm having a She told the doctor. <laughs> You're good, Stacia. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, God is good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Yeah, Amen. She, um, she was telling me a story a little bit earlier, and I said, that, that's actually amazing that, you know, that she knew that she was actually having, having a stroke and uh, was actually right. So uh, there's actually two types of strokes. Um, so we know stroke is the uh, number five cause of death in the United States, number two cause of death in, in the world. It's about 800,000 strokes, uh, strokes a year, and stroke is the number one leading cause of disability uh, in, uh, in the world and also in the United States. Uh, what we do know is there's actually two types of strokes, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so there's ischemic strokes. Uh, those are strokes that are caused by loss of blood flow to the brain, where you get l lack of oxygen to those parts of the brain, and those parts of the brain actually die. And then those represent about 80 to 85 percent of strokes. Wow. Um, so that's the most common. And then the, the uh, kind that Stacia had uh, was uh, hemorrhagic strokes. So those are strokes that are caused by bleeds. Um, those represent about 15 to 20 percent of strokes. Uh, the strokes that are caused by uh, loss of blood flow to the brain, um, those, were, um, those are what people normally um, that's what she was kind of referring to when she was thinking, you know, my slurred speech, uh, can I move my arms, can I move my legs, um, things like that. We talk about fast, you know, think about your face, is my face drooping? Mm -hmm. uh, arm, you know, can I move my arms, is one arm not moving? The little test um, you do as you're trying to figure mm -hmm. it out. Mm -hmm. uh, is my speech slurred? And then, you know, if you have those uh, symptoms, uh, one of the things you're supposed to do is, is the T, which means time to call uh, 911. Uh, those are common, you know, those are... Uh, symptoms of uh, ischemic stroke. Um, so the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body, the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. Um, that's what you would typically see in those type of strokes. Now the kind of stroke that she had, which is why I'm really impressed that, that she knew she was having a stroke, is a, uh, a, a hemorrhagic stroke. So those are strokes that bleed. So strokes that bleed a lot of times will present with a headache. Uh, if it's an aneurysm bleed, they, a lot of times they'll say it's the worst headache of your life uh, that, that you've had. And if you're not a person who ever get, that does not get headaches, then that is a sign definitely get to the hospital uh, right away. Mm -hmm. um, besides bleeding strokes, there's also strokes, I mean, besides strokes from aneurysms, there's also uh, most bleeds uh, are actually caused by high blood pressure. So, mm. you know, high blood pressure is the biggest risk factor for uh, both types of strokes. And um, you can get a little bleed just from high blood pressure in the brain. And a lot of times that bleed will cause a headache. And a lot of times you will get some uh, alt altered, uh, altered uh, mental status. So some confusion. Uh, first person may be alert and then uh, eventually the alertness starts to go down as the bleed starts to get, get bigger. Uh, because of where the, where the bleeds typically happen at with high blood pressure in the brain, a lot of times it's not necessarily um, one side or the other. So person may still be walking, may still be talking, wow. and things like that. So you don't necessarily get all the, the FAS uh, uh, symptoms. Uh, but the one thing I wish she would have done is when she said, hey, I'm thinking of having a stroke, sis, I wish she would have, uh, you know, remember that T and actually call 911 rather than, you know, hopping in the, in the, in the car yeah. and getting to the, get into the in ER. The Uber. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, sister mobile. Yeah. Wow. So now, um, and you call it again, hemorrhagic? Hemor Hemorrhagic stroke. Okay, so it, it, and you know, I mentioned the word yesterday about aneurysm. They're not, there's two different t types within that, under that umbrella. Yeah, so any, so any the bleed, bleed in the brain would be considered a hemorrhagic stroke. So that bleed could be caused by uh, trauma. It could be caused by aneurysm that actually ruptures. Okay. Uh, and some of those aneurysms tend to uh, run in families. Uh, and then uh, high blood pressure is probably one of the biggest things that actually will cause a spontaneous bleed in the brain. So. Which was... The, the result of my stroke, oh, cause hypertension. Hypertension. So let's talk about. So you you knew, you, you did you know you had high blood pressure? Yes, I did, and was on medication. It just was obviously it wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. um, even though I had uh, been to the doctor and he would tell me to you know monitor and it was relatively okay, um, but for whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, I still had the stroke. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. So how much on point do we have to be, Dr. Smart, when it comes to managing our, our, our high blood pressure? I have high blood pressure as well. And, you know, I've known Stacia for many, many years. And so when, when I saw it on Facebook, it just makes me want to tear up even thinking about it because we, we all know each other. We grew up together in the business together. And then you see, wow, this is my buddy. This is my friend. This happened to her. And it surely makes it real. 
for the rest of us. Um, and I think I kind of have it where sometimes it's high, sometimes it's, you know, I'm on medication, but then sometimes you walk off and you, you forget to take it. So I want to talk about the realities of managing blood pressure. And is it, if we don't do it perfectly, you know, are we going to fall apart? Yeah, um, like I said, high blood pressure is the biggest risk factor for stroke. We know that 80% of strokes are actually preventable. And most of that is just by controlling your, your, uh, your blood pressure, but also, you know, eating a diet that's uh, high in, in, in fruits, uh, vegetables, uh, exercising, uh, so different lifestyle things can actually help prevent stroke. When we actually start talking about high blood pressure, that's one of the things that's been, been looked at uh, for years and years, and if you go back, you know, 20 years and in 10 years, we see that the definition of high blood pressure keeps changing. And actually, mm -hmm. uh, just recently, just last week, uh, there's some new guidelines that came out from the American Heart Association along with 10 other organizations that actually lowered the definition for high blood pressure. It used to be 140 over 90, so 140 is the top number, your systolic mm -hmm. blood pressure. That's the pressure that the heart actually pumps the blood out. And then the bottom number is your diastolic, so that's the actual pressure in the heart as it's resting when, when the heart's not pumping. So if that top number is over 140 or the bottom number is over 90, that was considered high blood pressure. And then if you were in the 130 to 139 range or the 80 to 89 range, they used to call that pre-hypertension which means that, hey, you're, you're on the borderline and you mm -hmm. should be making sure that, that you are following, a guy, you know, following your uh, lifestyle changes. Uh, so recently that, that number was lowered just last week. Uh, so it's 130 over 80 now is considered high blood pressure. Oh, phew. So. Well, well <laughs> it's over, folks. No, no, it's, it, it really isn't. I mean, mine was at 140. I've over never seen mine, something. maybe one, some, 130 over 79, maybe. I've never seen it lower than that, ever. I tell people that, um, who ask, mm -hmm. you need to know your numbers. I mean, you really do. And I, I, I knew mine, but some of my other lifestyle um, practices weren't that great. I mean, let's face it, who doesn't like to eat? I love to eat. Mm -hmm. I add salt to my food. Well, s salt is already in so much. Right. Um, okay, I'm not gonna do this, I'm gonna go exercise. Or hey, I'm gonna join friends, we're gonna go have a few drinks, I'm, I'm not going to exercise. And I think, at, and the stresses of But you've been pretty life. active, I know you've been running marathons. Yes, and... but not consistently. Mm. And so well, now- Well, you were in my mind, I, oh, I saw oh, you. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> now, it's like, okay, wait a minute. My life depends on this. My blood pressure is probably considered borderline low now, but that's okay by me. I'm working out. I walk. It's cold outside. I walk. And it's, I got to take care of me. And even when there's stress, it's like, okay, do I take this on and make it my own to keep my blood pressure up, even though I think I'm okay, mm -hmm. but it will take its toll at some point if you don't deal with it. So wow. I would definitely say to anybody, know your numbers. If it runs in your family, know your numbers sooner. Mm -hmm. Hypertension runs in my family. And so, you know, I, I've changed the way I live my life. No more salt. I love ice cream, but okay, how about soft serve instead of the heavy duty stuff? And if I'm going to go out, to do something, you know, special, I'll treat myself, but that's a rare occasion. Rare occasion. Okay, we're going to take, we have to take a break, and okay. when we come back, we'll talk about more of the changes that Stacia Matthews has made, and then Dr. Uh, Jerry Smart's going to tell us other stuff we need to do to keep our blood pressure in check when we come back. Hi, I'm Dr. Karen Rodman, a member of the American Heart Association Circle of Red, bringing you today's medical moment. Stroke is a life-threatening condition that can cause death or long-term disability. To beat stroke, you have to act fast. F stands for face drooping, A stands for arm weakness, S stands for slurred speech, and T stands for time to call 911. Beat a stroke by acting fast. Welcome back.
back to Inside Indy, and we're talking to Stacia Matthews, and you know her from RTV6 for many, many years as a health reporter, and she's here telling us her story of, uh, she suffered a stroke uh, not very long ago, back in the spring, wow. and here she is. March, with, right? That yeah. was my birthday present. <laughs> wow. wow. And also joining us, Dr. Jerry Smart of Smart Neurology, and he's also on the board for the American Heart Association. Stacia, you were telling us about the changes you've, you've made. Mm. I sort of had to learn how to do everything all over again. I, um, I could speak, but I had difficulty remembering, especially short term. I would repeat myself over and over again. I, I could look at you and know that I knew you, but couldn't say your name. And so it took a while for me to get back to me. And I was asked over and over and over again by the therapist, would you be, or will you be all right if things in your life aren't the same as they were before you came here? And I'm like, well, you know what? I really don't have much of a choice. Mm. And so I take this experience grateful to God for giving it to me. It's allowed me to see the world and see life so differently. I am grateful for his mercy, for the knowledge of knowing what was happening to mm. me. The Amen. doctors, the therapists, the nurses who took care of me, I mean, everything from my medication to bathing to rubbing my back and just the words of encouragement. And so it's an, it's an honor that God will use this experience for me to help other people recognize the signs. We're busy people. We, we've got all things, we've got so much to do, our kids and work and church and mm -hmm. everything. And so it's like, you got to take a few seconds to care for yourself. To Okay, this doesn't feel right. And I know as a physician, you will say, you know your body. If I said to you, hey, something feels off. Something's wrong. Mm -hmm. And just even, even a loved one said, oh, you should take an aspirin and go to bed. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No. Yeah. I thought that would be, that would, no, that, no. Mm. So... React. Um, mm -hmm. React. Maybe get to know the symptoms better. Mm -hmm. And can we talk about those again, Dr. Smart? So we got people's attention. We've got Stacia telling them like it is. How do we know we're having a stroke? All right. So uh, typically, you know, we talk about think fast, okay? So F stands for face. So is my face droopy? Is it, um, you know, lopsided or crooked? So try to smile. Uh, the A stands for arm. So Try to raise your arms. If one arm you can raise, but the other one's not kind of coming up and you don't have shoulder problems, then that could be a sign of a stroke. And then the S stands for speech. So is your speech slurred? Uh, are you not getting the words out quite right? Are you not sounding right? And if you see a combination of those symptoms, then the T stands for time to call 911. Uh, like I said, in, in strokes that bleed, uh, a lot of times you may not get all those symptoms, but you will get a sudden onset of a headache that you didn't have, and you may get some confusion. So, like she said, she just felt weird, headache, wasn't acting right. So, if you get those type of symptoms, also get, get to the ER. So, okay. like I said, time to call 911. T. Okay. I think a lot of people think high blood pressure is like you're going to have the stroke when you're in the midst of the high blood pressure, but isn't it more about the long-term impact of going many, many years to without treating it, if it goes untreated? Uh, there's a couple different things. Uh, usually a stroke is gonna be a sudden event, so you don't really get a stroke that builds up over time. It's gonna hit you kinda all of a sudden. Mm. So when we start talking about the effects of high blood pressure, those effects do build up over time. So if you have, uh, I tell people, turn on a water faucet, so the water comes out, so that's regular pressure. Now, if I put my thumb over the spigot, now that, that water is shooting out a lot faster. So that's considered what high blood pressure. So as it's shooting out faster, it's also coming out harder. So you got to think about the smaller blood vessels get damaged by the blood pressure coming faster. Mm. So those are the blood vessels that are in your kidneys and in your eyes. So you can get long-term damage o over time with that. And then also if you get plaque that builds up in your arteries over time by not eating the right diet and, and just part of aging, then that, that plaque can actually break off. If it goes to your brain, we call that a stroke or a brain attack. If that plaque breaks off and goes to your heart, we call that a heart attack. So that's the effects that high blood pressure can have over time. Now, anybody has a, that has a blood pressure that shoots up all of a sudden for whatever reason, uh, that can also cause a, a stroke or a heart attack right away. Wow, I never knew that, okay. 
it, it, and it's a lot. It's a lot to think about. It's a lot to take in. And prevention, you mentioned a change in your oh. diet, no salt. No salt, um, a lot of water. Uh, How much water? Oh, goodness. What do you uh, drink a day now? You know, I have no idea. I, ju I just drink. It's like, all right, here, I don't go overboard, but mm -hmm. I, I drink a lot of water. And okay. one of those tall glasses, I do that a couple times a day. Okay. okay. And a lot of walking, uh, light weight. You know, I love to walk those, those marathons. And the one therapist was like, that'll come, not right now, let's just do 5Ks. So we were going to do a 5K coming up here. It's the Santa wow. run or something like that. Yeah, yes. and it feels, it actually feels pretty good. <laughs> good. Right. Okay. You know, it feels good to be healthier. You seem more soft-spoken. Is that, am I just, is that just because I know you had a stroke or, because I don't, you know, is that part of your, you just, your demeanor seems different. Um, I think I'm different. I just, I think I'm different. I don't, I try not to take things so seriously and get so wound up. You know, life is very precious. Right. Now, do those things contribute to high blood pressure? Like she's saying, being wound up. We know the salt, we know the diet, but stress. Yeah, stress, stress has definitely uh, been known to, to cause uh, headaches and as, as well as uh, elevated blood pressure and, you know, can be a, a contributor to heart attack as well as stroke, so. Okay. And can we touch on, what do you recommend diet-wise? What do people do? Uh, diet-wise, uh, when we start talking about water, you know, general recommendation is half your body weight in ounces, uh, water a day. Uh, exercise, we need to be exercising about 30 minutes uh, uh, most days of the week. Uh, that does not have to mean that you join a gym or anything like that. Just getting out and doing a brisk walk mm -hmm. uh, is usually, is usually uh, good enough. And a diet that's uh, low in fat, uh, you know, somewhat low in salt, as well as uh, high in fruits and, and vegetables. And sugar, I would think sugar's got to be a culprit in here somewhere. Um, that seems to cause everything. <laughs> I mean, you got my diabetes. I mean, of course, when that goes, you know, it's just. Yeah, we know if, if you have a high blood pressure and diabetes, you're, you're uh, 12 times likely to have a, have a stroke than mm. someone who just has high blood pressure by itself. Mm. So, so definitely, uh, you know, controlling your, your, your blood sugar and it's keeping a healthy, healthy weight. Okay. We've got just a minute left. Last words of encouragement or wisdom from Stacia Matthews. Well, God is so good. And again, I'm so grateful for the stroke. This, this is life changing. And I just encourage anyone who hears me, know your numbers. If, that's, mm -hmm. if, the, if you do nothing else, know your numbers. Get a blood pressure cuff and a real one and know your numbers. Mm -hmm. It's life changing for her. So we hope that she has changed your life, you the viewer out there watching. So, Stacia Matthews, thanks so much for joining thanks us. Thanks for having me. Dr. Jerry Smart of Smart Neurology, thank you yeah. for joining us. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. I'm Kelly Vaughn, this is Inside Indy. We'll see you next time. Watch that blood pressure. Bye-bye. Has Christmas become too commercialized? In the 1800s, the holiday consisted of feasts and church services. So what can Christians do to put Christ back into Christmas? Pastor Rob Hovermill of Indianapolis urges Christians to simply speak up and say, Merry Christmas. And I think if we continue to, to, to say Merry Christmas, because when people take time off, that's what they're taking. They're taking time off of Christmas. Companies give Christmas Day um, or that Friday or, or whenever it is, they give that day off and in all of your packets and your companies, it's Christmas, you got Christmas Day off. Um, people are taking Christmas vacations. Nationally renowned journalist Lee Hawkins Jr. agrees. Hawkins grew up singing in the church as a young boy and is putting Christ back into Christmas in a new music video and Christmas album he's released with nothing but songs about the birth of Jesus. The video, Pretty Little Baby, is an inspirational story, I believe, because it really takes the story about Jesus being born that fateful day and putting it in a modern context. When, you, as you see Mary and Joseph walking out of the story and then Mary starts to feel Jesus kicking and she falls and she throws down her food and her groceries and then all of a sudden we're enveloped in this story where the three wise men are on the bus and they say, okay, it's about to happen. And as you can see them walk, it, it, it's just such a powerful story because 
Most people do not know that this is happening and that this is the story of Jesus. But as the story goes on, we're starting to see it unfold in modern times. What you gonna call your pretty little baby? What you gonna call your pretty little baby? What you gonna call that pretty little baby? Born, born in Bethlehem. What you gonna What you got?